Thank you so much for uh, for having me here. I really appreciate um, the Area Council and the Economic Institute organizing this and inviting me here to speak. Um, my name is Igor Popov. I'm an economist and a data scientist at Airbnb. So as as Micah very nicely kind of foreshadowed, actually, my background is more in kind of public economics and urban economics and the effects of technology. It is very much not in sort of quantitative forecasting, which was my nice nice word for drawing out straight lines. But that's hopefully going to give me a little bit of freedom to talk a little bit more broadly about kind of the things that from my vantage point I think are happening already in, in the space of housing and are likely to continue to happen and even accelerate um, in, in the housing space. And why housing? Because um, it's a critical time for housing in the Bay Area. Um, and I, I do think it's to the, a lot of the, the future of the Bay Area economy is going to be ultimately shaped by how certain housing issues are resolved, what we ask for our housing and how we relate to our homes. I think there's a lot of, lot of interesting directions that, uh, that, that the future of housing could take. Uh, but I want to really talk about three of them. Um, and I think they'll all kind of sit under this umbrella of, I, I think, imagining a future where housing options and the choices you have around your housing have just fewer constraints. I think there's kind of somewhat of a natural kind of marketplace entropy to expect that as people innovate around um, various aspects of the economy, they innovate by going around and looking to see what constraints you're facing in your choice sets, and maybe there are constraints that you didn't even necessarily know that you had. Um, that kind of leads to a more flexible economy over time, and I think we're already starting to see that in the housing space, but that may very well accelerate um, in the future. So the three things I want to really kind of focus on, one is maybe a trend towards a more flexible use of housing, two is a trend towards greater divisibility in housing. I'll explain what I mean by these terms that I made up. And um, three, probably the, the area that I know least about, but is, is, is very important to acknowledge, kind of more options for the financing of, of that housing. Um, so with that, future of housing in 15 minutes, um, let's kind of dive in. I will try to sprinkle um, Airbnb data and anecdotes um, because that's kind of um, the world that I've been playing around with a lot recently um, as we go through. But I think this is all kind of more broadly applicable to kind of past housing, and I'll try to know where I think that's the case. Sounds good? Yes. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, so I think let's start with kind of an, an, an easy one. Um, these lines kind of turned out a little odd, but we'll do kind of a warm up just in the way that I think, what do I mean by flexible use of housing? I mean the way that we relate to our housing and our homes is kind of changing, and we're asking our housing to do more for us. Um, our kind of like simple short term example is just the lines are blurring already between your housing as a residence and your housing as a workspace, all right? So even in kind of the past 10 years, roughly, um, at least from a few years back, this data from the New York Times quoting um, some research on the American Sociological Review. Don't tell any of my economics advisors that I'm quoting sociology. Um, you know, already the percent of employers that allow some employees to work from home is rising pretty quickly. Now, I think this is, um, one, telling us that, that we're relating a little bit differently to our homes as uh, potentially as time moves on. But two, I think this is actually the reason I bring it up. It's very important to the future of the Bay Area. I think the Bay Area is seeing kind of amazing you know, evidence of agglomeration economies where everyone thought that, or maybe everyone thought, I don't know, I wasn't at this conference 10 years ago, but maybe everyone thought, I kind of imagine everyone thought, okay, with technology, we'll all be able to work remotely. We won't need a cluster in these little tiny apartments all next to each other and these little tiny offices right next to each other. And in fact, we're seeing kind of the opposite happen, right? In San Francisco, more and more companies are competing for the same space. Um, we're actually seeing that for some reason, companies want to look at closer and closer to one another. I think that really tests kind of the amount of space we have for offices for the workspace of the Bay Area, whether or not this trend will kind of continue and, and that workforce will become more mobile and more unattached from their from their offices, I think will, will largely determine kind of um, how sustainable this agglomeration economics is. Um, so that's kind of one, I think, on the short term. We already see this largely happening. I think on a, on a medium term, one thing that I'm really kind of excited about is thinking about flexible use of housing from more of a community perspective. Um, uh, by the way, when I work from home, I do not look as put together as this. I, I look like a mess in my pajamas. I really like this photo. This is what I think I look like when I work from home. Um, but you know, from, from a community perspective, I kind of the, the the wild example that I always love to give is kind of imagine you're a small town, and you have you know a certain you know maybe your town of 50,000, 100,000 people, and you want to bring in thousands of visitors, but you only want to bring them in for one night, right? Um, and then you want the next day, you want your time to go back to normal without having been changed and turned into you know what Sochi looks like now. 
Um, th an example of this that I love from Airbnb is last year during the eclipse over the summer. So um, did anyone here actually make it up to the path of totality during, during the eclipse? So this was, <laughs> yeah. So this is just a map showing that path of totality where you could see the kind of complete solar um, eclipse throughout the United States. Now, this is an event that a lot of people want to see. This is also an event that lasts three minutes, right? So you're never going to want to change your whole infrastructure for three minutes of, of the, the um, Earth blotting out the sun. Um, this is a perfect time to think about how can we use our housing more flexibly. It doesn't need to be just residential or just accommodations. If you actually think of it as a mix, um, you can actually kind of make this happen where you change, the, change your town's use of housing for one night and then revert it back to, um, to its original. So the red dots here are kind of Airbnb listings. The turquoise dots here are hotels. It's hard to see the turquoise dots, not because I made them small, but because these are not, most of these towns are not traditional tourist hotspots, but they became so for two nights. Um, and kind of without this flexibility in housing, you would have never been able to support this sort of um, migration of people to see this kind of incredible event. Um, we have evidence that there's kind of a flexible use here because actually a lot of these hosts were new to Airbnb, about half those people in those first um, two nights that were, uh, the two nights basically, the one night before and one night after the eclipse, were actually new and hosting for the first time. So this is kind of a, an interesting community-wide example of thinking about your housing more flexibly, you know, accommodation sometimes, and at a community level that could be very, very powerful. What does this look like on a, like a wild, like 2030 projection? Um, I think, you know, it's kind of natural to think about reprogrammable housing or or even kind of reprogrammable space. I think that's pretty far off in the future, but I think if that happens, it's gonna probably start with parking lots. Um, <coughs> one, one prediction. Um, I should mention too, I actually forgot to mention this in the beginning. Now it's too late. Um, because I'm, <laughs> because I'm, made, I'm doing the economist thing of putting out kind of wild predictions about the future, some of which will end up being wrong, uh, the views here are my own and not those of Airbnb. <laughs> <laughs> Um, which, which is not going to be wrong because I'm wrong. <laughs> um, so that's kind of, I think, what we're asking. Um, we're asking more from our housing in that sense. We're asking it to provide more uses for us. What is kind of our housing giving us in return, so to speak? I think it, we're starting to kind of imagine a future, too, where housing is becoming more divisible. And I think of that as kind of along two dimensions. I think housing can be more divisible kind of across time and across space. And kind of talk for a second about each of these. Um, with the starting point being that housing is like a very clunky asset, right? It's very hard to change um, what type of housing you're consuming from period to period. It's very hard to consume half your housing and only pay for half your housing, and so on and so forth. So I think it's natural to think, you know, if people are going to innovate around the constraints, those are natural constraints to start thinking about. Um, so what, what do I mean by kind of divisibility across time? Um, I think that, you know, as I mentioned, very hard to change what kind of housing you consume day in and day out, right? That's kind of, a, there are natural reasons for that. We not only um, live in our housing, but we also have a bunch of crap that sits in our house, um, <laughs> at least I do, uh, that is hard to kind of lug from place to place. So you might think that's kind of like an unbearable constraint, but on the other hand, in the rest of the economy, right, we're seeing all of these trends towards kind of what people broadly describe as untethering. So I think a lot of people imagine a future where, you know, fewer people own cars and, and transportation is more on demand. Everyone's trying to imagine a future where you don't have to pay for 800 channels, you can only pay for the ones you want to watch. Um, most people have kind of gotten off of their two-year cell phone contracts. Um, education is starting to be more a la carte. Uh, so it's, on the other hand, right, I think most of us still are getting our housing through either a 12-month lease or a 30-year mortgage, and if you're on a month-to-month, -month, it's because you already did, did your 12-month lease. Um, is, like, is this going to be the one holdout in the economy that, that, that does not provide more a la carte options in terms of timing? Um, it seems kind of unlikely in that sense. So could we have more kind of opportunity to move around and have housing be more um, of an a la carte spot market? I think if that's true, um, it, it, it not only will be kind of a millennial phenomenon, but I think especially for kind of at-risk um, uh, populations, it's very hard to enter into these long-run agreements, put up huge security deposits, could actually have a great positive impact on, on, on housing inequality. Um, and divisibility across space. I think now, with, with kind of the advent of things like home sharing, you can think of your home not just as one clunky asset, but as actually a collection of multiple assets that you could actually use differently in different ways. Um, so one kind of um, uh, 
little bit of Airbnb data uh, trivia that, that, that always kind of, I think, tends to surprise people is that the fastest growing host demographic people that run out their space on Airbnb in the United States year in and year out is seniors. Um, now, people think like, oh, but my, I, I just spent, you know, how much time did I spend setting up my grandpa's printer? The, the economics of it are actually extremely powerful, right? Because seniors in the United States, and the Harvard Center for um, Joint Housing Studies has done great research on this, you know, they're a very interesting, very unusual for the Bay Area kind of um, part of, uh, of, of, of the population that actually is often sitting on too much housing, does not want to get rid of their one asset, right? It's, either, it's like usually the family home, usually children will come back and visit, but they really want to divide up this space if they could, make money off of it, but actually stay in their home and age in place, which is something that, that time and time, uh, time again in surveys they say is very, very important to them. So the more housing becomes divisible, groups like seniors have a chance to say, okay, I no longer need these three bedrooms that my kids were in. Um, I could put them on the short-term rental market. I could lease them out. I could still own the entire asset. Um, that divisibility is a very powerful thing for certain. Um, demographics especially. Um, that's, that's what I want to say about divisibility. And then um, I want to say just kind of a word on financing because whenever there's kind of new innovation, um, the finance folks will always find a way as well. No, I'm kidding. Um, I, I, I have a few examples and I love these, um, I love these headlines because they're all, if you read these headlines, they're all, this company will give you money, but they want something in return, which I think is a really nice way of describing any financial product, but it makes for very, makes for very, nice, makes for very nice headlines. Um, as, uh, as we're thinking about new ways to use housing, that means we might think, uh, kind of use those new uses, sorry, that's an odd phrase, you might be able to kind of think of new ways to finance the, um, the purchase of housing. This is kind of one example that, that, that we heard of Airbnb that's not, um, no way kind of affiliated or, or necessarily endorsed by Airbnb, but this is a company called Loftium that started, uh, started by an Airbnb host in Seattle. It's like, okay, look, I, I know that kind of um, private rooms on Airbnb can generate income. If you share that income with uh, Loftium, Loftium will help you with your down payment on your home. Similarly, these kind of other two um, headlines down here are uh, kind of highlighting a company, uh, another Bay Area company called Unison, which is gonna kind of essentially put up as much as half of your down payment in exchange for a share of the appreciation um, of, of, of your home value when it comes time for, for you to sell. So um, I think this is still kind of a new space, but I think it's natural to think that as kind of certain constraints in the use of housing um, uh, kind of fall away, similarly, um, people will think of new financing opportunities to think of. Um, I don't know how I'm doing on time. I think, oh, time is up. I'm sorry, I, I was, not, was not looking at you. I'll, I'll, I'll end just on a note that um, I think that these trends are exciting, but I don't want to put necessarily a positive or a negative valence on it, because I think the way that um, the kind of benefits and the costs are going to be spread out over society largely still depends on kind of the policy discussions that are going to be at play following um, um, the real materialization of all of these trends. I think that it's natural to first expect a backlash as, as kind of people see their cities change in new ways, but then I think it's ultimately going to lead to a really powerful discussion <coughs> about kind of who's benefiting how, in this new world of housing, um, how are we thinking about, you know, one thing I worry about a lot is, you know, the, the distribution of gains for owners versus renters and, and things of this nature. I think these are all powerful discussions that we're going to have, and, and I just want to say that I think they're largely going to happen in cities first, um, and I think the Bay Area is always going to be somewhat on the forefront um, of these uh, of these topics, both because of the kind of innovative business environment, but also because of the constraints on housing that kind of some of these um, issues are going to come to the forefront um, sooner here than they will in other parts of, of the country. Um, so I will I will end there and just say thank you. Um, I'd love to talk about this more. I put up my, my email just first at last at Airbnb.com. Uh, but I really appreciate it and, and hope to hope to speak with you more on these topics. Thank you.